Greetings, greetings, greetings and salutations one and all. Welcome, welcome, welcome to a brand new week right here on the Night Shift with DJ Kevin Stewart's Community and Finance Night. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? You know, after that, it's with the sound of JDL. The track is called Link Up. The track is called Link Up. Drink, 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 drink. And she goes by the name Jay Dell. Wanna officially say greetings and salutations and welcome to each and every one of you locked in right now. Those locked in on the night shift with DJ Kevin Stew. Hey. On Tune In Radio, much love to you. Those on the affiliates all over the globe. One ham on a radio in the UK. The top of the morning to you. The Foundation Radio Network, ClintonLindsay.com out of South Florida. Much love. NIE Radio out of New Jersey. Island Worldwide exhibiting the power of music out of New York. Out of Texas, WGLRO, home of the Dunning Walker Morning Show, the People Station. Taking you from the sheets to the streets, connecting you from Detroit to Denmark and all points in between. Olive Wap Radio, Dusik Media Groups, much love to you. Those who are locked in on PEMGTV.com Those on Facebook Live, what you doing? Big up to Radio Crystal Gospel Out of Brazil Hey Dora How are you? I want to say thank you to my segment sponsors. Oh, I didn't say big ups to those who are locked in on uh, the home of the Night Shift to DJ Kevin Stew, KevinStew.com. 
so glad to have you. Couldn't do it without you. You wouldn't, and and you have my word. I wouldn't even try. I do want to say thank you to my segment sponsors, the Pulse Media Group. One thing in a moment is priceless. Give them a call. They can provide everything you see here on KevinStew.com and more. So you want to take care of your videos, your photos, your streaming, your advertising. Get them a call at 754-999-1140. That's 754-999-1140. All right, check them out at PulseEMG.com. They can stream your wedding, your funeral, your church service, your seminar. You name your event, you want it streamed? Call them up, tell them DJ Kevin Stew sent you. I want to say thank you to Althea and her healing heavenly hands. Althea is a licensed massage therapist operating out of Broad County, North Miami, Dade and South Palm Beach counties. She comes to you, bringing her table, her oils and over 20 years massage therapy experience. Give her a call, 954-655-9000. That's 954-655-9000. Or email her at theolator at att.net. She doesn't ask for much. Outside of paying her, she only asks that you get off her table and go sleep somewhere else when she's done. Yeah, I always fall asleep. I want to say thank you to Reggae Global Entertainment. Reggae Global Entertainment will act as your booking agents, take care of your tour management, handle your, cop- your copywriting, yeah. trademarks, business registration, legal service referrals, music production, marketing and promotion, and so much more. Give them a call, 954-804-8199. That's 954-804-8199. Or link up on Reggae Global Radio, Reggae Global Entertainment.com. LMDJ Kevin Stew sent you. Blink, 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 oh. And thank you to McNeil Trucking. Drink, drink. With McNeil Trucking, you're in good hands. Handling your moving needs in Broad County oh. and around. Yeah, oh. man. The other day he did some work in Orlando, I hear. Get him a call, 954 406 9740. That's 954-406-9740 With McNeil Trucking, you're in good hands Mention my name, DJ Kevin Stew And the night shift to DJ Kevin Stew when you call him Now as we're linking up I'm glad you're doing well, Dora As we're linking up here I have on the line with me No stranger to the night shift to DJ Kevin Stew She's a true friend and a true family member And one with a heart as big as the world Trust Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Executive Director of NAMI Broad Miss Sandra well, I can't even say miss. Let's go with doctor. <laughs> doctor Sandra Compa Boynton. Welcome, welcome back. Welcome back home, Doc. Hi, Kevin. Nice to be here. It's absolutely delightful to be here tonight. How are you? I am well. I am well. It's always a pleasure to be hanging out with you. Absolutely. How are you? Well, I'm doing quite well. It's been a very trying time, as you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And especially for those, for the community I serve, which have been really impacted by, you know, the pandemic. Yes. In a very negative way. So we are seeing a lot of individuals coming in with anxiety, mm-hmm. fear, mm-hmm. grief, stress. So it's been it's little it's been a little bit difficult for us, but we're coping as we go along. You know, 
<laughs> when you when you when 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 you have an institution like NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, when when you say you're coping, that's a different level of coping than the, the, the average organization or the average group of individuals will say. Because you are dealing with some individuals that are, are, are right there at the edge a lot of the time. Absolutely. And we're coping because we're seeing where we can help people. It is, it is really never an easy task to say a person is so so anxious or so depressed that we can't help them. It's, it's, it's never easy. And we have seen that. We have seen individuals who are there, they're just crying and they're just calling out for help and just wanting to hear somebody on the other end of the line and, and just really wanting help. But it's always gratifying to know that we can help some people. And this is how we cope. This is, this is the way we work at NAMI, again, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, to not overburden ourselves or overwhelm us because honestly, mm-hmm. we, we can get burned out. Yeah. At my staff, I, my staff handle situations every day where we get some very, some very difficult cases. We get individuals who are calling to wanting to die by suicide. And we, we have to handle these cases. And I'll tell you, Kevin, when you can talk somebody out of taking that drastic step and giving them some hope and letting them know that there is always tomorrow and there are things that we can do and there are others on the other side of the grass that's not as green as yours. Mm-hmm. It is gratifying. And that's how we cope. We have one person at a time. And this year has been as I said before, extremely difficult because we have seen such an increase in the number of people wanting help. No. But we also know that there's, there's so many services in our community available to them, and many times they don't know that they exist. With it, with, because people at NAMI are basically facing the same challenges that individuals that are calling in for help are facing. So how is it that that NAMI is is going through navigating the circumstances to provide this help? Because sometimes you need to be looking into the face of an individual to see that there's actually hope. Yep. So how how is it that that, that NAMI is, is working around this situation or, or through this situation to reach people to, to provide this help? You know, one of the things we do, besides the fact that we have some professionally trained individuals on our staff who somehow know to turn it off and, 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 and give hope and help, and we also encourage our, I encourage our, my staff mm-hmm. to seek help themselves. Yeah. I I have a therapist. I need to see somebody who I can actually unleash on at some yeah. point. Right. So, you know, it says Dr. Pure thyself. And it is so important for us to constantly learn about the new stressors, the reason we stress, what we can do to help ourselves and to have somebody to talk to. And if, if that means a family member who you can go home and say, you know what? This happened today and that happened today. And just Mm de-stress, that's what you have to do. But I can can tell you, I have a very, very capable staff. And we we all know we get together, we regroup, we talk about situations, we we de-stress within our office environment. And we also see the goodness of what we do. We see where... And you, it is so important to be, just be thankful and to be grateful to be able to help one person. You know, when I started the street, and I've said this before, when I, when I was on this your show last, when I got involved in, in psychology, my aim was to, to cure the world, Kevin. <laughs> yeah. It came across very fast to me that that was not going to happen. 
So I had to resort to taking care of one person at a time, doing yep. the best I can. Yep. And and that's how we survive. It's how we survive. It's 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 not an easy road at all doing what you do because asking those questions the the the, the whys when it comes to how we, we we why we do what we do you know it it's 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 a it's a difficult ask sitting down and, and working out and working through the whys mm-hmm. when you look at when you look at at, at some of the in over the last let's say what's it now around about 20 months mm-hmm. yep what has what has been the the, the 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 call what has been the cry most of all the cry is what is gonna happen tomorrow when is this gonna be over and i'm not talking about individuals who are diagnosed with a mental illness. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about the community at, la- at large. Right. Everybody's asking. We don't know. The don't know will always be the, that factor that gets you way down. It's that uncertainty. It's the uncertainty, the unknown. Mm-hmm. And everybody's asking, is this going to be over? Is it gonna, will we ever get back to normalcy? Is anything going to be the same? Uh, I know one of the things that happened during the, the start of the pandemic as when we went into the full outburst, I had a number of college students calling in. Mm. And, and we know young, uh, the younger generation, it's pretty much they're focusing on them right now. It's, and that's a given. Yes. And they're asking, will I ever graduate can I, will I ever go back to, to my classes? Will I ever see my friends again? You mean, these are the questions that were being asked. And honestly, we could only be honest and said, you know, we, we hope and we pray that it's going to happen. But to give you a when or a time, right. that's, that's not in any of our, our capacity to do. Because, and we, we had to be honest, you know, we were scared too. We still are. Yeah. But we have to be honest and say we do know that, like everything else, things will come to an end. This too shall pass. Go, absolutely, and we will go back to some sense of of normalcy. Uh, we will be able to do some of the things we did before, but there's no guarantee what and how it's going to happen. So you know, we had to come real upfront and personal to let individuals know that all we can tell you is that it will pass. Right. But when and how, we don't know. Has, has there been a, a talk about a new normal or uh, as, as, as a part of even just talking amongst yourselves, your colleagues? Mm-hmm. You know, let's, let's just prepare for a new normal. Yes, there has been. I mean, it's like a given today that we talk about, you know, what is happening, how it's happening, how it's evolving, and what it's looking like today. And, you know, one of the things we we know we have to do is to to face each day as they come. And, And so we talk about what's happening today. We hope things will change tomorrow. But we talk about how we can survive today. Because that's the mode we're in. We're at that. We're at that frame where we are looking at today, how we're going to succeed today, the plans we're going to make for the near future, and how we can achieve those plans. And you know, if we want to put an extended five-year plan, it's fine. Also, but just know that to be sure, we have to focus on today. And um, many of our members are just willing to say, you know what, I can't do what I can't do. I don't know what I don't know. So I'm just going to have to take that, that bit of advice. You mentioned even looking at putting, doing a five-year plan, you know, uh, basically going into a period of time the way you would prior to, say, January 2000. 
Mm-hmm. Or, sorry, January 2020. Yep. And does this now put people, when you're talking with, with individuals, whether clients or colleagues, mm-hmm. coming from a professional place, coming from the, the institute that the institution that, that, that NAMI is, is it now a thought or the, 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 the conversation includes a lot of flexibility? So now it is being encouraged that, yeah, you're making plans, but emphasis is being placed on being flexible with these plans. Absolutely. 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 We have to we have to look to the future. We have to look to the future, but we have to be realistic in our planning. Right. And we have to go with the flow as it is. But I would I would encourage every person to make plans. That's how we succeed. If we don't have a plan, we we don't have a plan, we plan to fail. Yeah. So if you, you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Absolutely. So you put those plans in place, but you also have to be very realistic. And this is one of the things that we have realized from the pandemic, that it's a reality check for for many of us in many ways. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the way we thought before, the things we did before, that's not necessarily so. So as we continue to live and to plan and to move forward, we're also realistic that, okay, this may not happen, and as you said, we have to be flexible. Right. The minute the minute the pandemic hit um, in twenty nineteen, actually, mm-hmm. we had to pivot. We were putting all our NAMI programs because we do provide educational programs and trainings for individuals who are living with mental illness, their family members, our behavioral health community. Uh, we provided support groups. We did a lot of advocacy work. We had to change our entire way of doing things. We got everything online. Right. And we had people change their way of thinking. We had we had staff members who would were reluctant to actually put their face on a Zoom call. But over mm. time, they had to change their way of thinking and doing things because at this point, it has become the norm. Right. And the good thing about human nature is that we can be flexible. We can go with the flow when we need to. And people saw the need to make changes, and they did. And I can't begin to tell you how many people we've reached at NAMI, NAMI Broward, mm-hmm. just by just by making sure that we maintain and sustain those programs and we had people who we knew needed us yes. and needed to be in these support groups and to be and and to be to be strong enough to move forward and they they jumped on i got to get on my zoom call i may not want to show my face in the first couple of uh, uh, programs but over time it got easier and right. that's it that's so it's such a great concept to know that people can move with change and, and develop as we go along. Yeah. Because that's how we go stronger. That's how we move forward. And I've seen this. So in my estimation, the pandemic has been a curse, but it has also been, you know, a help to many people. Um, not that I'm condoning it. I don't want it to happen. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but you know, we have to see the good with the bad, and that's where I'm coming from. The coming up uh, at, at at this point in the year, this is when Nami gets together, gets people together, and and the annual event Nami Walk happens. Absolutely. Last year. It didn't quite happen the way it has happened in years gone by. Correct, correct. Just to to give people an idea of how things happened last year, could you just do a little bit of an overview of that for me? Absolutely. Last year, um, our walk occurred in October. And uh, as you know, and your audience may know or not, 
NAMI is a national organization. So we operate from a national standpoint. And our national office was, you know, on top of us, okay, we have this walk. And every state, there's a NAMI office in every state. Mm-hmm. And in many counties, we have affiliates like NAMI Broward is a local affiliate uh, here. And we have NAMI Miami-Dade and NAMI, NAMI Pinella County, so on and so forth. Right. So our, our national office, we, we were all planning a wonderful walk, you know, as we normally do with our hundreds and thousands of people coming out and meeting and, 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 and being a part of a really great experience. And as we move forward and we re- realize the, the, the magnitude of the pandemic, we had to pivot and we decided that we had to go virtual. Now, I must say, Kevin. Mm-hmm. This was one of the greatest tasks that I've ever experienced because I've never had a walk online. Right. And we actually were so flustered as to what we were, how we were going to present this walk. But working with our national office, uh, we got some guidance. So we decided, okay, it's going to be a virtual walk. We're going to have people walk in place. And, and we called it NAMI Walk Your Way. We had mm-hmm. individuals doing their own walk, whether with their family members in their homes, um, working out in their own, in their own backyard, uh, you know, whatever way they could work, do some form of walk their way, which would be more like just getting together and doing something together to show that unity and that strength. Right. And we posted this online. And it was a 100% online presentation. We had a, 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 a group of us who streamed from a location, a small group of people streaming from a location. And we had a, all our presentation was done online. And uh, we were successful in the sense that we, we, we gave the community what we could. Mm-hmm. And the community was responding, responsive enough to participate yes and and we had a really great time it was it was a great event it was nothing like our last seven years Mm. but it 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 was a way of bringing people out and together and 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 acknowledging the stigma associated with mental illness and sending their own messages as to how they can destigmatize the whole uh, mental illness situation right So that's what we did last year. And moving forward to 2020, 2021, we we have been very concerned about having a live walk. But as we, you know, as we move forward and we're watching, we're we're actually working in association with the CDC guidelines. And we're watching what's going on and people are being vaccinated and, Understanding that having an open air event might be a little bit easier. We've seen many, many events happening, you know, big events happening, and um, we haven't really seen that great outbreak. Right. So we have decided to do this twofold. This year, we're we're going live. Our mm-hmm. walk is going to be at uh, Nova Southeastern University on October 9th. And we're also going to be doing an online streaming streaming of the walk. And we're still asking people to put their, their effort, whatever effort they're putting forward to be a part of the walk online, sending your pictures, your videos, whatever you have, so right. that we can stream that. But we are also inviting people who may feel comfortable enough to join us at Nova Southeastern University for a, a full-fledged walk very, very similar to the walks we have had in past years. It's going to come with everything that we normally bring. We're going to have some speakers. We're going to have our DJ, Kevin Still. Thank you very much. And we're it's going a pleasure. to... <laughs> we couldn't do this without you. <laughs> and, and of course, we're going to have our comp- t-shirt competition or, or dog competition. We're going to have our full 5K walk. We're, we're going to be giving away T-shirts, having children's corner, uh, having a kid's corner where kids can just go and get face painting and, 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 and the twisted balloons and having fun with our 
with our uh, cones or whatever. And also just having a day of meeting and networking with our mental health providers in Broward County. And this is where people will have an opportunity to talk one-on-one -on -one with the providers that they use on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. Those providers that provide the services to them and to get more information as to what they need to do, how they can have access to services and all that good stuff. And, you know, it's again, it's going to be a great war because we're really going to mimic past years. We're hoping that the community will be will feel comfortable enough to come out and be a part of the walk. But if they're not, we're always online for them. Mm -hmm. So registration for the walk is 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 happening on the NAMI Broward website also. Absolutely. So if you go to NAMI Broward dot org, NAMI Broward one word dot mm -hmm. org, and uh, click it. You can you can become you can join as a walker, just a participant to register, or if you choose to form a team, and this is so important because we're, we're we have um, groups that are coming out in droves, like family groups, just friends, organizations. Their people are forming these groups, and they're, they're, they select a team leader. And that team leader actually generate more people and more funds and they come out and they walk as a group. We also have a very important uh, uh, section to the walk also, which is um, in memory of. And if you have lost a person, either a person who has uh, died by suicide or a person who has you know, died because of you know, complications with their mental illness, mm -hmm. And we have a special area where we where we allow you to to present a poster or to write something in their memory and to honor them in that way. Uh, we have so many. It it is always a pleasure to see children, babies in strollers, adults, people in wheelchair, people who are old like me or young <laughs> like you, Kev. You know, just come out and just. <laughs> just, just get together as a great group, all yes. talking about how we can fight the stigma associated with mental illness and how we can just recognize that mental health and mental illness is real. The prevalence is growing, and but we don't need to stay there. Nobody needs to stay in a state where they're not getting treatment, they're not getting their... their uh, being able to to live as regular citizens in this country it is recovery is possible treatment is extremely important because so many people who we're walking and talking with every day are mm -hmm. living with mental illness yeah you can't really tell by looking you know no you can't it's not written on your forehead right you know and and people who are in recovery are just regular people like you and me and everybody else. Yes. So we so you know this is a this is a time when we can get together and we can always celebrate life, understand more about the illness, meet people who can the resources that are available available in our community, and just talk to somebody, and just have just pure fun. Let's let's talk a little bit about the funding that goes into to, to NAMI and how how the funding helps individuals. So our funding and um I must say that our NAMI walk is our greatest fundraising event mm -hmm. for our organization. And this is because one hundred percent of the funds we raise go directly back into our community. Every program that we, we provide to the community is free of cost to the community, members in the community. Not only to those individuals who are living with an illness, but their family members, their caregivers, um, any person that they have to work with, this, this, uh, the, the service is available to them. We have this wonderful program. It's called a Guardian Advocate Training. 
-hmm. that's provided to caregivers and family members and friends free of charge. And what that does is we train individuals to understand mental health, understand um, what happens with a Baker Act, which is an involuntary commitment to the hospital if you're going through a crisis, and to be a liaison between your medical team and the patient. Mm. So if that person is does not have the capacity to, to, the, to speak on their own, you know, or to, to help themselves at the time because of psychosis and they're in crisis, yes. then a, a guardian advocate will be there on hand to be that mediator between them and the medical team. So whatever decision is being made, it's not being made for them. They're, this mediator uh, developed that, that rapport with them, developed that uh you know, some confidence in them, with them, and they can represent them, even though they may not be able to say, I don't want this medication or whatever it is. So over time, they have that, they build that relationship with the patient and they, they, they have access to their medical records with their approval, of course. And so they speak to the medical team on their behalf. Too many times individuals are in the hospital and the, the medical team is making decisions on their own without even knowing the patient. So we have our guardian advocates that go in and get to know the patient and get to represent them. That is a free service to our community. Now, is it only individuals that have relatives that, that have mental, have been diagnosed with mental issues that get to have these, these um, guardian advocate trainings? No. No. So if anyone too, that is interested can say, I want to become a guardian advocate? Absolutely. If you have that interest, the passion, the compassion to work with this population, and of course we go through a series of tra a, a screening, of course. Right. But if you have that the, the, the need, the desire to, to represent an individual, you attend that training, we screen you, and we assign you uh, uh, in fact, the hospitals assign individuals to patients as you get trained. How great is the need right now for guardian advocates? Oh, brother, at this point, it is very great, especially for people who are going in and out of the hospital. People who are not, maybe have stopped taking their have stopped going through uh, their treatment mm -hmm. and have decompensated somewhat and have been be corrected and just need somebody to, to, to say, listen, I don't want to do this anymore because you know what it is with mental illness, Kevin, there is a time even in, even in crisis when there's some semblance of, of cognitive cognizance. Yes. When a person can, actually explain things to you that's how it works and so our guardian advocate is there with that person right through and through and once they can make get that breakthrough to say to, for that individual to tell them what they want or or express some desires then they can work with the medical team uh, of course you know it's it's working together it's not dictating to the medical team or the medical team dictating to the to the guardian advocate it's working collaboratively to mm -hmm. make the best decision for the person who is involved and is, we see, we see that need more and more every day is there you are you required to be a particular age to become a guardian advocate no you just have to have capacity uh, let me let me rephrase of course you have to be over 18 years old okay and considered an adult yes but and also you have to have capacity and like i said we do do background screening because you know we want to make sure that we're matching the right person with the right person and and your reason for wanting to be an an advocate so to speak or a guardian advocate so to speak it's real you know we, our, our our job is to protect this population and and we we do it whatever way we have to 
You see, I, I ask that because so many times I've spoken with individuals and they're like, boy, you know, these people out there need so much, they need help and nobody's there helping them and I feel for them. And I'm thinking, how badly do you feel for them? Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're talking about it. But there comes a time where you either put up or shut up. So <laughs> you, you either decide that you're going to do something to help them or well, you just stop talking about it, basically. But, you know, sometimes, I mean, people see the need, uh, but it's not, you have, to, I, I feel you have to be, you have to have that, in, that the compassion and the passion to do to work with a population, especially if you're not related. If mm. it's your own, you will jump hoops to do whatever you have to do right. in most cases. Right. But it, it does take, in my opinion, it does take a special kind of person mm. who wants to do this to a total stranger. Right. It, you know, it, it, and I would not encourage, I would not encourage a person who see the need and say they need to do something about this and it's not jumping in to do it. I would not encourage that because the passion would not be there. Mm. You know, and it's, it's you. and don't don't get it it's not don't get it twisted. It's not an easy task to work with individuals who you don't know, you don't know anything about, and you're trying to help them to make some decisions, whether you're mentally ill or no. It's never easy to make decisions for other people. They always say human resources is the hardest resources to work with. And it is. So <laughs> it's also the most precious resource. It is the most necessary. And, but you also have to have that, the desire to want to do this. You know? Yes, yes. And you really do. And if you're... Uh, it's different if it's a family member it's different but if you don't if you're just doing this for the money and i say this even to my my colleagues mm -hmm. if you're doing this because of the money you might as well step up because our, our system will continually be broken but if you're working because you genuinely want to help a population you want to be a voice you want to be the strength for them then step right in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know. I just want to take a, a quick second to to put the number to reach a broadcast right out okay. right now. Seven seven three seven eight nine. Stu gets you in touch. Seven seven three seven eight nine seven eight three nine. Let me tell you once more. Seven seven three seven eight nine seven eight three nine. You can if you if if there's a question that you want to ask about how you can get involved in with Nami. Uh, or what you can do to contribute to NAMI, something that you probably didn't hear me address or you didn't hear Dr. Dr. Boynton address, uh, Dr. Sandra. Um, <laughs> we'll just go with that. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if there's something that you didn't hear her address and you'd, you'd want to get some answers and you can't wait till tomorrow to make a phone call but you want to find out no, go ahead, give us a call. You know, I, I encourage you to. And I, I'm going to stay on Facebook Live for this one tonight. So you can post a comment or a question on Facebook Live in the comment section. Of course, the stew pot is always available. For those that are wondering, the stew pot is the, what others will call a chat room because we're fancy on kevinstew.com. It's the mm -hmm. stew pot. It's where we keep things interactive and, and, and bubbling. And remember, Kevin Stew is where you go to have acceptance through enlightenment. And a part of what NAMI does in their trainings is to enlighten you. You get to learn about what mental illness is. And you get to learn what is not. And some of the agencies with which NAMI has, has worked and is working with, like your local police department just may be getting help from NAMI, where, wherever you are in, in, in the country. You, your local police department may be getting help from NAMI. Um, I know NAMI Broad is involved with, with, with police departments throughout mm -hmm. Broad County 
and well expanding throughout uh, uh south florida and florida on a whole but yep. since we have broad county represented right here we can talk about that for a moment dr sandra absolutely when it comes um, to policing how does an institution like nami come into play with helping policing okay so First of all, I'd like to I'd like to say that we are very involved with our crisis intervention training, which is a forty hour training provided to law enforcement throughout the, the country, but especially in Broward County, to help law enforcement officers understand what happens when they confront a person who is psychotic, mm-hmm. what happens when they, they confront a person who is is mentally ill. And, um, and 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 getting in trouble with the law, how to how to relate to them, how to recognize the symptoms of what's going on, and um, I don't know if our, your audience is aware of this, but we do have a mental health court in Broward County, mm-hmm. uh, a, a misdemeanor court run by I know you're you've spoken with Judge Wren on your program. Yes, she has been on. And, and she's the nation's very first mental health court judge also, Dr. Absolutely. Um, judge Ginger Lerner Wren. Correct. And she and she runs that misdemeanor mental health court. And then we also have Judge Ari Poor, mm-hmm. who runs the felony mental health court. And it's important that we talk about that along with law enforcement because I... I ran CIT for many years, Kevin, and mm-hmm. the, the police officers will always say to me, you know, we never join the police force to become social workers. And technically, <laughs> a lot of their, a lot of what they do on a day to day is to be social workers. It is. It, with individuals. it heavily involves social work. <laughs> Absolutely. And they're not trained. Right. Initially. Their training it does not involve a lot of psychology training, yes. but as they go through and they uh, they do this forty hour uh, CIT training, crisis intervention training, a training that came from Tennessee uh, way back in the days, mm-hmm. uh, maybe about thirty seven years ago, and um, and they they learn everything from nuts to bolts. They do. They learn about mental health diagnosis. They learn about the psychotropic medications that are taken. They talk a lot about substance abuse, developmental disability, and how to take care of themselves while care for law enforcement. That is important. Very important. Absolutely. And as they go through this 40-hour training, which involves entails a lot of role play and and meeting with people who are with lived experience who will relate to them some of the good, the bad, and the ugly of their encounter with law enforcement. We see an understanding. Our officers can understand and relate. Mm-hmm. So it is so important. And we ask all our law, all our departments, our sheriff, our Brown Sheriff's Office, and all our local munici- muni- municipalities. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Struggled on that one. To, to make sure that their officers are trained because they are becoming social workers in our community. Right. Uh, and so, um, so NAMI tries to work with these, these different sectors to make sure that the people that we are serving are given justice. Uh, and there's, there's, there's so many new issues coming up that, the pipeline right now. I, I really want to talk about some of these things. Mm-hmm. One is called the Stepping Up Initiative, which NAMI Broward, we have a robust advocacy group who are working diligently to start the Stepping Up Initiative. It's an initiative to, one, make sure that the people who are living with mental illness and are in our jails spend a shorter period of time in our jails. And if they have to be in jail, they're given service. They're, or and we reduce the number of years that they have to be there. Mm. So, so one, a lesser time. And two, if they don't have to be there, they don't have to be there. They can be reverted to, to other um, institutions. To other, 
treatment pl- programs. Got you. So that's a stepping up initiative, and it's a it's a it's a nationwide wide initiative, and Broward County has just gotten very involved with this, and um, we're working along with the courts and and the jail and the and the behavioral health community to bring to bring this to Broward County. We're actually going to have a sign in in October. Um, with our judges and all the people concerned, to to just um, that we're to just say we're all on the same page. This is what we all want to see happen. So when you say it is new, you mean it is brand new, brand new? No, it's not brand new, brand new. It was initiated back about fifteen years ago, and it's a whole seminar. It's a whole uh, mapping as to identifying the gaps and the, the needs and the gaps in the community. Mm. So 15 years, years ago when it's when it was initiated, it sort of came to a little standstill. So we got some initiative off the ground, one being CIT training for law enforcement, making okay. sure we get as many officers trained. Mm-hmm. And then it, we sort of stopped. So we still, we still have those needs and gaps that we need to attend to. So NAMI has taken up the, the, the baton, so to speak, and we are restarting the initiative. And so we want to make sure that we are targeting all the needs. Another need is permanent supportive housing. Nobody gets better living under a bridge. And yet True. so many people are homeless. Yes. So another initiative we're working on is finding permanent supportive housing for people who are living with mental illness. And the other thing that's coming up, uh, is a 988 number. That's a three-digit number that people can use in emergency as opposed to 911. And that That's number, interesting. Absolutely. Um, this is going to be, it's, it's nationwide. It's going to roll out in July of 2022. However, every state has to put things in place to accommodate this. And that means making sure that when you call 911, chances are, your loved ones will be taken to the jails. What we want looking at is when you call 988, your loved one is taken to a treatment center. So with, with behavioral health specialists that will work with them. So uh, what, we, what we're trying to do is to tr- we're, we're working with our legislators to see if they can pass this because of course there's gonna be a tax levied onto like your phone bill. Mm. And, in order to accommodate this, to, to, to get the funding to pay for these treatment centers and everything. So we're working diligently with all the powers that be to, to bring this 988 number to Broward County, as opposed to having people call 911. Is that in place anywhere it as, is as in of place. yet? Absolutely, it is. It is in place. Uh, in some states, meaning that they have approved the funding for the taxes to be added to the phone bills, that kind of stuff. Yeah. But it's actually going to be rolled out in July 2022. Now, what that means is that if Broward County gets to the level where, where they are in the position to add this 988 number, it can be added by July 2022 because it's already approved. What does Broad County need to put in place for that to be the case? We are making, we're trying to make sure we have enough treatment centers like our CRC, the the Centralized Receiving System at Henderson Behavioral Health. Yes. uh, Where you take individuals, law enforcement will have a person needing services in a crisis they take them to that location, not the jail. Mm. So they also have to have in place some fact teams, teams that are forensic assessment service team. I think that's what it's okay. They have to ensure that these um, these teams are in place to, to give the service to the people who are going to be taken to these treatment centers. So all that needs funding. And that's what we're trying to do, get the funding to accommodate this new 988. I know 211 is going to be very involved because I don't know, you know, 211 is yes. that 
um, first call for help, pretty much. Right. And they're going to also be very involved with a 988 um, number so that they can triage people to those places when they call for help. Now, when it comes to staffing at, at, at these locations, does NAMI play a role in that? Staffing, we do, we do a lot of advocacy. And, Got um, you. So, so, again, the need for guardian advocates. Guardian advocates and just advocates, people who will advocate for services. Mm. Um, that's a you know we we have we um we operate with a group uh, of volunteers and they call themselves the nags <laughs> get it so it's really nami advocacy group gotcha and and, uh, and and the purpose of the nags is to get in touch with all our legislators throughout the country throughout the, the county Mm -hmm. to educate them on mental illness to let them know the needs that we that are that, that exist or don't and to to try to work on certain bills mm -hmm. like the permanent supporting housing and and even the 988 these bills that have to go through legislator um so our our, our nats touch every single ad, uh, legislator in broward county mayors mm. we, we we talk with the mayors the representatives everybody who have access to a voice on our capital because we want them to know what our needs are and right. we want them to be able to help to provide these these the resources we need for this community so the nags nag them enough to get absolutely got you they are so appropriately named <laughs> <laughs> i think so too <laughs> And they're proud of it. They're proud to be nads. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I'm not mad at them at all. Absolutely not. I, I, I would be a nag just for that. <laughs> you know, it's 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 great work that we're doing in the community, NAMI as a whole. Mm -hmm. But you know, and and we are a grassroots organization. We're we're you know we're, we're a small organization in terms of staffing and all that. Yes, we have we have a number of volunteers who work with us and so and in different capacities and so we get the work done we get the work done because we have people as i said before with a passion to do it yes is there a need for well i guess there is always a need for volunteers there is a need for volunteers always um, especially coming up to our walk on October 9th, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have so much to do to get in, to prepare for the walk. There are all different areas that we have to cover. For sure. And should anybody have an interest, I'm going to just run that number if, if I might, Kevin. Oh, please do. So, you know, just call our office. It's 954-316-9906. Nine nine zero seven. That's nine five four three one six nine nine zero seven. Anytime nine to five, Monday through Friday, and just indicate that you want to volunteer, or go to our website and um, navibrowe dot org, and you can you can sign up to volunteer with us, and it's. I, I can't begin to tell you what a fun event or walk is. It, it is such a pleasure to do this every year. I know. I enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> you it's, know, that's for sure. Um, yeah. I, I having, having done it before <laughs> and coming on again, coming on board again this year to, to be a part of the team. Perfect. Uh, yeah, I, I so look forward to it. Um, I, I did put the number and the website in both the Facebook posts, Facebook comments, and on the website, kevinstew.com. It's in the, in the stew pot. So anyone wanting to call them up, call up NAMI or to visit the website to see what NAMI is all about, if you're not familiar with it, um, NAMI Broward. And for, for the listeners all over the country, there is a NAMI near you somewhere. Absolutely. So, there is a, <laughs> go ahead. There is a NAMI in pretty much every county. 
in, in, in Florida, I think we have 27 affiliates. And if there's not an affiliate, meaning that it's a small um, office, mm-hmm. there is an, a state office. So pretty much every state will have a NAMI office. And should in case you don't find one, you go to our NAMI.org, which is our national office, Mm -hmm. and they can tell you, they can direct you. And and, and in both cases, they will give you a name of a person to speak with. They will give you the number or the address so you can get services. And remember, if you're living in Broward County and you need services for your family members or yourself, we are available. Again, it's free. It, it only takes a phone call. You call into us and we will have you situated. And what is really great, unfortunately, because of the pandemic, all our programs are, well, majority of our programs are online right now. Mm-hmm. So, and there are small classes. We have classes and support groups every day. Uh, we try not to make them too, too crowded so that people get lost in them. We, may, we accommodate you. And if you need to speak to somebody just one-on-one, there's always a second person, a second facilitator in the room, and you can indicate that and you will get that one-on-one service. Now, I just have to be, to be um, clear that our facilitators are not psychiatrists, they're not uh, psychologists, they are not uh, mental health counselors, in most cases, there are individuals who have had lived experience. That means they have been diagnosed with a mental illness. Mm-hmm. They're, in, they're in full recovery. They have been trained. They have refreshed training uh, periodically. They are, they are monitored. So, uh, you know, they can relate. Right. And we, they can relate. So please don't hesitate if you need help. Reach out to NAMI. We are here for you. That's why we are here. I know someone once said to want to be in the mental health field, you would probably, you are, how was it? No, you'd have to be in need of mental health help to be (laughs) one to work in the mental health field. I've heard that said before. <laughs> I've heard that said before. Hey, they, they may not be so far off, you know. <laughs> but, but no, it, 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 it does take, like you said at the beginning of the broadcast, it does take a special heart. It and does. For one to be able to relate, you'd either have had to have had your own experience or you just have that empathy. Where That's what it is. You you can really immerse yourself into the situation. That's exactly what it is. You know, I've had the I've had the pleasure many times to sit in Judge R. Report's uh, uh, cha- chamber mm-hmm. and to see him and Judge Wren in action, and it's amazing because. I would not, I cannot see anybody else or or many people who are in that, have that kind of power and and the authority to, to put people in jail and to, you know, and they are so compassionate. They're so understanding mm-hmm. with the population they're working with. And, and it's, they're chosen. Yes, and I'm sure there are other judges like that, but I'm talking about what I've experienced. These these are judges that are chosen to work with this population because it isn't easy. Yeah, you know? I, I don't I don't see that as being ev- anywhere near easy. It's mm-hmm. it's hard enough dealing with individuals in criminal cases where you're presiding over this case and getting arguments from both sides. Correct. Using basically the same information. It's just a matter of perspectives on it. Uh, I myself have been um, following a, a couple of major cases mm-hmm. here in the in the U.S. Um, one being Rodney Reed for the murder mm-hmm. of Stacy Stites in Texas, and the other right. um, Julius Jones for the murder mm-hmm. of Paul Hoyle in Oklahoma. Today, Julius mm-hmm. Jones was granted was not granted. 
um, the Pardon and Parole Board recommended three to one um, the commutation of his death sentence. Mm. He's mm. been in, 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 on death, death row for 20 years well, now. Right, right, right. And, and so even with that, the family whom I, I, I've, I've spoken with his sister on mm -hmm. occasions, both on this broadcast and off, I've spoken with his best friend from high school coming up, um, even mm. before high school, because they were also neighbors. Mm. Um, I've spoken with them. Even what they have had to go through over the past 20 years, an individual going through incarceration and, and on death row. I've spoken to, to, to individuals who have come out of prison that talk about um, post-incarceration syndrome. Uh, of course. And, and so th these are things that individual, individuals live through and live with. And sometimes they do need a helping hand. Absolutely. And, and, you know, the judges and the attorneys have to, they see all that and they have to deal with all that. They yes. Have to, and, they, and these are people. These are just not, you know, uh, uh, figures sitting there. These yes. are real people. With, with real feelings. feelings and, and real feelings. And yes. they've, they've had to make some hard decisions. And, but they also have to consider their mental capacity. Yes. And not very often are our judges and law enforcement officers considered when it when you look at when you start to talk about mental health. These individuals are not considered in the list of individuals that would need help. Absolutely. This this coming Monday, next Monday, I'll be speaking with an attorney who has been working wrongful incarceration cases for ages. Mm. And he's working on one right now that he's having the hardest of times. You oh know, boy. just just talking with him and, and hearing what he's had uh, been dealing with over the years. It, that's enough to make someone go crazy. It's, it's, it is difficult. And, you know, it's difficult on every level. You know, it's, it's, it's difficult on every level. But we just always need to see the human in people and and you know just be fair you know it's mm -hmm. and my my greatest my greatest thought and i've said this repeatedly is that a person who is actively psychotic should not be in the jail it's not a place for a person to be i'm not saying that being mentally ill is gonna it's gonna uh get you out of get you out of a situation mm -hmm. a legal situation right. but what i'm saying is you make sure that person gets the treatment they need before you can even start to put them in a small cage but because even that, that though conducive to well wellness but even that is enough to put someone over the edge that's correct well actually if someone isn't even close to the edge that is that is liable to drive them there yeah so we want to make sure that we, we, we recognize that, you know, there's a, there's a place for every person. Yes. And if you, are, if you are not well mentally and you're, you're actively psychotic, that's, a, that's, that's what we have to consider. Because many people are mentally ill in the jail who are functional and can, you know, they, they have the ability to, to, to handle their situation. But if you are, you have that break from reality, mm -hmm. you do not need to be in a confined state like the jail. You need to be in treatment. You need to be getting the services that you need. And once you're at that place where you are, you are sane enough to deal with your ish situation, then you can throw me back in the jail. But right now, if I'm, if I, no, I can't, and I've said it repeatedly, and I'll always say that a, psych, a person who's psychotic does not need to be in a jail. Well, look at us right now. In, well, we've moved away in a big way from the quarantining. Absolutely. A lot of individuals were 
a crisis away, a, 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 a fly in the house incident mm. away from having a breakdown. You're absolutely correct. That so, isolation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So right now, there are individuals walking around that anything could really trigger them. That's true. Mental illness is not something that, that uh, what, well, what I have come to realize about it is, is not something that necessarily um, just runs in the family. For some, it does. For some individuals, it just a matter of a series of experiences that take it to a breaking point. You know, I'm, I'm so glad you said that, Kevin, because look at this. If, you're, if your arm is broken mm -hmm. or if you have a heart condition, it doesn't necessarily have to run in your family. Right. Cancer doesn't necessarily have to run in the family. Mm -hmm. But you are diagnosed with cancer or heart, or heart condition or diabetes. Right. If your brain is not well, mm -hmm. if your brain is sick, your brain is sick. That's the bottom line. And I don't think we have gotten to the point where we can appreciate the fact that our brains can be sick. Yes, just like the our rest of brains, us. Yeah. Just like the rest of us. And that's what mental illness is. Nobody wants to be mentally ill. Just like nobody wants to get cancer or nobody wants to have diabetes. But the stigma is different. Absolutely. Absolutely. So and, and it, it, it is incumbent on organizations like NAMI to raise this awareness, to, 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 to shed this light so that people can understand, to bring this enlightenment. And this is why we do what we do. And every year we walk, we walk to bring awareness to mental illness. We walk, to, we walk because we want the, the community see, to see the unison that we bring yes. to, to fight stigma. It's not just one organization. We bring every provider, as many providers as we can together to say, listen, we stand in unison to say that this is not something that's made up. Right. It's happening. And I'll say this again. I've, I've, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Having hosted NAMI Walks before and going to do it again, mm -hmm. I have seen these institutions all yes. in this one place working together to raise awareness and to let people know that, hey, listen, there is help here. That's exactly what it is. Right yeah. here, available to you. And I, I, I look at and some of these institutions, I've, I've driven past them on a number of occasions and didn't even really recognize that, wait a minute, that's what they do. Yeah. I, I remember seeing even Henderson Behavioral. Yeah. And we, you and know, it, it, they all there. want you to know, they, they all, we all want our community to know that we're there for them. That's what we, because like we said, you know, uh, it, it it's not gonna, mental illness doesn't walk in and pick people because of how you look or where you're from or what's, what's going on in your life. Yeah. It does not it discriminate. It does not discriminate at all. And, and it can happen to any person and, we're, and there are places that you can get help. Affordable places, and that's another, that's another misconception. Yes. That there are places that you have to have money, there are places that you can get help that you don't have to have a whole uh, health insurance and a lot of money. These are these community-based agencies are there. They exist to help. These community-based uh, agencies are given funding from other sources so that they in turn can provide the services to the community. Yes. So, you know, I just... Uh, it, this is what we, we talk about every time at all our meetings that we hold or or speaking engagements as we send our people into the community and do a lot of outreach. We want the community to know that NAMI exists. And if you don't know, give us a call. Mm -hmm. Or check on our website. We have a whole slew of resources 
highlighted there. We have information on diagnosis. We have information on on people you can talk to if you just need somebody to talk to. Yes. We have it all there for the community, all free of charge. That's the best part. It's free. It's free. It's free. You can't beat free 99. <laughs> how, how, how do you beat free 99? You can't beat free 99. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Absolutely. And no question asked, you know. Um, people can get on and, and, and I have people call my office and we have a full conversation for an hour. And I don't need to know your name. But if it's something you just want to get information on and you choose not to say who you are, mm -hmm. that's okay. We just want to make sure we reach you. Yes. That's kind of how we got connected. You know, I reached out to you because I, I was looking for someone to come on this broadcast and talk about mental illness and men. <laughs> Correct. You remember? I remember. I remember. Yes, I do. And and since then, this has happened. <laughs> you <laughs> no, haven't been able family. to get rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't want to. We don't ever want to. <laughs> but but yeah, you know, sometimes it it is it is as simple as just wanting to get some information, and it can change mm. your whole life. Correct. It has changed mine. Absolutely. And and so you know, I I. I tip my hat to Nami Broward for the continued efforts. I tip my hat to you, Sandra, for oh, you. staying true to your calling. Thank you so much. And, and, and you. to your team. Melody, I know you couldn't make it tonight, but much love to you still. <laughs> Absolutely. Say hi to the family for me. <laughs> you know, but, you know, it's, it's, it's it's so and and all the others too the 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 mm -hmm. the, the volunteers um the, the core staff that you have mm -hmm. that that help mm -hmm. to make nami broad do what they do and we 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 call on broad county and the neighboring counties also i know Absolutely. you might have your own thing going on but still it's not just about this one day it's not no, just it about the, the, the 9th of October with NAMI Walks. It's about more than that. It is. It is. And, you know, I just want to say thank you, Kevin, for allowing us to speak, to speak our truth, as they say, mm -hmm. because we, we want our audience to know about NAMI. We want them not only to know about NAMI, but just the fact that, there's services in the community. Nobody needs to be locked in, a, in their homes because they can't get services. And we promise. Our promise is that we'll work with you until you get the service you need because it does exist. Yes. Uh, you may not get it to, uh, right this minute when you call, but we're going to stick with you to make sure that you do get the services that, that you need. And it is not a shame. There is no shame to be diagnosed with a mental illness. Absolutely none. You know, I think one of the, the greatest achievements mm -hmm. will be to get over the stigma. That's correct. I think that would be the greatest achievement mm -hmm. because but, we're yet to do it. And, you know, we are, we are, we have come a long way. We have come a long way, and I can only see us getting better. The more we talk about it, yes, the better it gets. The more people are, feel free to re and realize that they're not alone. You know, it's okay not to be okay. It's we and and it doesn't matter who you are. Simone Biles just came out, you know, and she ha she she was not in a place where she could do what she wanted to do. She's a renowned celebrity. Yes. You know, and all the other celebrities that come out, the more they talk about it, the more I hope people will realize and listen, it's not because I am just little me, little old me. Mm -hmm. It can happen to any person. And the only way to move forward and, and to be the productive citizen that you can be is to take standard attention, 
get the services, get the treatment you need, and move into recovery. Go right back into being who you need to be. It can happen. It has happened and it will happen. I know I haven't gotten to the point where I have had a, a, a crisis or anything like that, but mm -hmm. I have had a therapist. And Absolutely. it has been the most amazing thing. And I recommend it all the time. There was a time where you would never hear me go out in public and say, well, you know, I, I went to a therapist. What? Now I shouted from the mountaintops. Yo, it, you've never been to a therapist? You must be crazy. You need Absolutely. to see one. Absolutely. I tell everybody, when I was in grad school, one of the first things I learned, listen, if you're going to be a clinician, you need to go into therapy. And I haven't stopped. I haven't stopped. <laughs> Boy, it, it has been one of the best things ever. And, and, and this, to this day, I now have people that I know that are therapists. Right. So, and, and I, I, they don't know it. But I kind of hold them close because every now and then I might need to have a little reasoning. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't, I can't afford to go sit on a couch, you know. So, yeah, I give a call. Hey, what's up? <laughs> you know? Hey, make the most of it, huh? Exactly. So, you know, but for all fun and jokes aside, when you have an institution or an organization like NAMI that is right there, that has these services available to you for free, that has these services that you can get involved with before you actually need them. Absolutely. Then Absolutely. there's no reason to just go and let it go by because everybody was affected over the past 20 months, especially in, that first, in the first 12 months of it when there was mass quarantining. Oh, brother. Everybody was affected. Every person. And, you know, it, it is sad to say this, but I'm telling you that we, we really haven't seen the true effect because no. it's, it's like PTSD, yes. post-traumatic stress disorder. Yes. It, it will come back. These, this, this isolation or the grief that people have been through, yes. the losses, the, 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 the losses, and everything that can come back at a later date it manifests itself later on and we are wondering what why are we in this mode why are we acting like this why are we feeling like this because of trauma mm -hmm. that we have had through this period of time seeing people die seeing the things that were happening being the, the isolation the uncertainty it can come back and 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 we have to prepare ourselves for the later years. Yes. And, and and we stand firm at NAMI because we're ready. We see this. And we know that we're going to have a slew of people who are going to be going through some experiences from the trauma that are going to be needing help. So if at any time you're feeling just not yourself or or, or just wondering about things before, like you said, Kevin, before you get to the point of no return or, mm -hmm. or, or, you know, reach out, reach out to somebody, talk to somebody, call us. We're here for you. Yeah. People are available. People are available. Once again, before you go, Dr. Sandro, um, mm -hmm. NAMI, NAMI Walks 2021. Yeah. A united <laughs> day of hope. Absolutely. And like I said, we're looking at a year, years to come that we don't know mm -hmm. um, what it's going to look like. So it's again, we're going to we have a choice to walk our way or to just get united as one and meet us on October 9th at Nova Southeastern University, 3301. College Avenue. We're going to be right before the big library. There's going to be parking. There's be there's going to be fun and food and lots of uh, networking you can do. And we really look forward to seeing you. And should in case you want to be a vendor, mm -hmm. meaning that you want to have like a table and chair and meet, you know, be a vendor for us, there are a number of uh, sponsorship opportunities 
that you can um, you can try out. Uh, you know, we have sponsorships starting at two hundred and fifty dollars, all the way up to fifteen k. Mm. But if if you too, if you want to bring your your business, yes. you are welcome to be a sponsor for our NAMI Walk. Again, you can go online, just go to our NAMI Walk page, and you will see all the information. NamiBroward.org. Nice, Dr. Sandra. Thank you very much for taking the time out to do this and to share with us and and to remind us that nami is there for us there Absolutely. is help on there is help right there at our fingertips and there's always hope thank you so much kevin it's always a pleasure to to be with you and to speak with you and your audience and we look forward to seeing you on on october 9th oh what fun we will have listen i will be there I will be there. I, I, I can't. I, well, I cannot not be there. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've made a commitment to the world. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, and to me. Yes, Thank and you to so you. Much. You're welcome. And um, we will talk. You have Absolutely. a great night. Take care. Continue to take care. Thank you. You do the same. Have a great evening. And thanks for having me. Bye-bye. It's a pleasure. Have a good night. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Sandra Com- Crump- Comper Boynton and um, Nami Broward. What an organization. These are real people doing real work and really need support. So let's give the support whichever way we can. You know, every little bit counts. Go ahead, make your contribution to Nami Broward. Because your resources, 100% of, of the resources, go back into the community. Let's, let's, let's give where we can, however we can. We're going to take a quick little break. When we come back, we'll do a little musical therapy. I want to say thank you to those who are, have been locked in. And whether you've been commenting or been quiet, just taking notes. Thank you nonetheless. Thank you for sharing. And even if you you didn't share in the beginning, you can go back and share the entire broadcast on Facebook Live. Of course, there's a podcast, Night Shift to DJ Kevin Stew. There's a YouTube of the same name. You can always share any of those with anyone that you so de- desire to choose. You you so desire. Um, we're going to continue with musical therapy. We're going to say good night to those on Facebook Live. Deuces to you. Much love. Still, call your friends, friends of your friends, friends of your enemies, enemies of your friends, and your enemies too, because we're not leaving them out. Everybody gets included. You might need to call Nami for one of your enemies one day. Who knows? You see, Bob said your enemy could be your best friend. We're going to take a quick little break when we come back musical therapy. Thank you. Facebook Live, come on over. KevinStew.com. We'll be right back. <laughs> Pulse Media Group, innovative streaming and recording, has done it again. A new way to get your business in full view of your neighborhood consumer through AdShare TV. It's available in your neighborhood today. It's easy. Just call us, 754-999-6020. Become a host today and place a TV monitor in a strategic location so it's easy to see. Get a one-minute video ad or longer that plays anywhere in our network. Can't be a host? No problem. For a few dollars, we'll run your 30-second video ad. A host can run announcement specials like buy one, get one free, or discount ads. Let's turn your flyers into a 30-second video with music, or a voiceover, or let us create and run your video ad with a spokesperson. Take advantage of our early enrollment discount. Join us today. Your ad will be seen at least 30 times per day in your AdShare TV neighborhood. It's easy. Just call us. 754-999-6020. Add Sheer TV, part of Pulsing Media Group. an entire village to raise a child. 
Hello, I'm Paul Campbell, here to talk about Palace. Peace and Love Academic Scholarship. This nonprofit group supports students facing serious obstacles from entering or continuing their studies, not because the grades are failing, but due to the lack of financial support. Over the past eight years, Palace has awarded 600 scholarships valued at approximately 50.3 million Jamaican dollars or 415,000 U.S. dollars. Together, we must build a better future for our children. Please visit www.palace1.org and make your donation to brighten the future of a deserving child. Palace, preserving young minds for posterity. Making great music is one thing, sharing it with the world, that's another. Let the professionals at Reggae Global Entertainment help you to another level. Specializing in artist management, booking, public relations and marketing, and promotion. Reggae Global Entertainment can help you with event planning, websites, photography, and video production, press releases, legal services, and graphic design. They can even help you with music production so you can get the sound that you want every time. Call Reggae Global Entertainment at 954-804-8199. That's 804-8199. Or visit them online at reggaeglobalentertainment.com. Matthew 28, 19 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. With this in mind and encouragement received during a South Florida media conference, the Church Links was birthed. The Church Links is an interdenominational worship service portal for churches, providing the tools to spread the word through technology in a cost-effective way. The Church Links, www.dahchurchlinx.com. Your links to worship and praise. There is an event coming up tomorrow night, and as a result of this event, there will be no live night shift broadcast. Healthy Love will not be on tomorrow night. The event is more than a village. It's a Taking Innocence Project um, red carpet event. It's titled More Than a Village, a thought leadership forum and red carpet movie premiere and this happens at 6.30 p.m. Eastern at St. Thomas University in the Machado Auditorium. Now, you might, be, you might remember that I had the Taking Innocence Project on this broadcast, on the Night Shift of DJ Kevin Stew. And if not, I'll, you can go ahead and, and look into the archives for it. But... This premiere happens tomorrow and and as a result of it and and having been there to help promote it, um, I was invited to be a part of the premiere. So there will be no healthy love tomorrow night, not live anyway. But you you're welcome to check out any of the broadcasts in the archive. You can go to the, the podcast, The Night Shift to DJ Kevin Stew, or you can go to YouTube if you prefer to watch. You can go to kevinstew.com and choose from any of the posts that were there previously. All options that are available to you. But this event, let me put it up on the screen once more for you. More Than a Village, a Thought Leadership Forum and Red Carpet Movie Premiere. Tomorrow, Tuesday, September 14, 2021, 6.30 p.m. at St. Thomas University. This is um, down in Opalaka. So, um, uh, Western Miami area. An event not to be missed. If you can make it, please do. You can reserve your seat. 
there is a website, tinyurl.com slash 838TX9WH. Go ahead, um, just go to the website, takinginnocence.com. That's takinginnocence.com. <laughs> This is how we kick off our musical therapy today. This is the sound of Pat Satchmo. Yeah, man, the veteran in the business. The track is called Try Love. To put the case to rest Love is easy Hate is tough The people have had enough That's why I say We got to try love It's better to make a friend And not an enemy They must keep them closer, but they'll drain your energy. Yeah. So how about this time? We try to get along. I know it can be tough to find some common ground. Cause love is easy, hate is rough. The people have had enough. That's why. Put the case to rest Love is easy Hate is tough The people have had enough That's why I say We got to try love Try love Love is real Love is sure Love is the key that open doors Love is patient Love is kind Love make you see Although it's blind Love is easy, love is pain Love is the sunshine through the rain Love is open, love is free The only hope for you and me You got to give this thing a try My oh my Cause love is easy Hate is tough Your people been through enough That's why Pat Satchmo working out of the stamina all stars. Track called Try Love. What's the problem? Yeah, what's the problem indeed? I can't tell you what the problem is. People are afraid. They are petrified. Yeah, that's the problem. Lift up them lock up in and them post them though if you go outside. That right there. All of the clubs and pubs locked down. I can't even dance to my champion song. But I stay strong. Ready for self-isolation. Sean, Sean. Now we under attack. Drone some out of space. So if you're going out, put gloves on, put a mask over your face. Be all I wrap up my dreadlocks and bring my cleansing cream with me. Maintain a good personal hygiene and stay three meters away from me. So I say go. It's Mike, it's off. It out the Working out with a friendly fire band. Coronavirus. We are not welcome anymore. So listen, I will survive. Are you the one who tried to make me lay down and die? You think I'd grumble? 
looking cat Lay down and cry, I will survive I will survive Just as long as I know how to live I know I'll stay alive Clean out your house, good disinfect and sterilize I got my ceiling pan, domestics and my beer on by my side Hope and pray the NHS don't fall apart Big up the doctors and the nurses, we keep them in our thoughts All those hours that them working just to keep people alive Maximum respect due to all of you My heart is full of pride, now you see me Me say respect you I'm not that selfish person in that supermarket queue So if you feel like pushing past vulnerable people and I see All that anger that's inside You don't want to upset me So I say go Straight out the door Coronavirus mm, You're not welcome anymore Were you the one who tried to hurt me with your life? You think I'd crumble You think I'd lay down and cry Oh no that I I will survive Yeah As long as I know how to live I know I will survive People Out your house, good disinfect and sterilize. I've got my sleep by domestics and my beer on by my side. So if just like me, you have lost good friends, or you don't know if it's corona or government and murder them. Hello, one thing I know, just make sure you're not end up in a hospital. Me not go make no doctor joke me, me not take no vaccination. So I say, go straight out the door, coronavirus. You're not welcome anymore People, clean out your house Good disinfect and sterilize I've got my ceiling bank Domestics and my beer on by my side Now they say that domestic abuse Is on the increase Because of all them dirty liars And them bedroom cheats True luck on them can't sneak out And their lover is all alone So they keep texting, sending messages To your mobile phone Your partner find out And them get vexed Them sip your naked picture worse than that Them read them intimate texts Oh, but just like Shaggy You tell them, no, it wasn't me No, you see how this corona causing your misery So she say, go oh, Sleep on the floor As far as she's concerned You're not gonna get her zoom zoom anymore She treat you good, she treat you like a king and a man And just because you couldn't keep your little something in your pants So I say go, straight out the door Coronavirus, you're not welcome anymore Were you the one who tried to make me lay down and die? You think I'd crumble, you think I'd lay down and die To all those shopkeepers who are going to tea. 15 minutes to the top of the hour. 15 minutes before I get on out of here. Oh, no, let me send out a little warning to all of you. One them, Mikey. Send for all my friends, thief out your things and share with them. So I say, go straight out the door. No behavior. Coronavirus, you're not welcome anymore. Clean out your house, good disinfect and sterilize I've got my ceiling fan, the mistress and my beer on by my side I ride, I ride, I ride There goes my heartbeat You are the reason the sound of Little Kirk. Yeah, Mr. Kirk Davis himself. Jack is called You Are The Reason.
Saki, a rendition of Rapture. As we bounce through this McNeil trucking sponsored musical therapy segment.
the sound of our third this track is called mood right now what's your mood right now Chana Nicole and as many stood up and fought for justice we had a little mini victory today with Julius Jones the Partner Borough Board of Oklahoma recommending a commutation from death row to life with possibility of parole Talk about fighting for justice. Racism, no, I won't be silent. No, no, no. Now they need to go the rest of the way and say, yeah, he did time. He can go home. But the fight doesn't end there. There are so many more. Many of them that we've not heard about. Many of them that have already been executed. But justice is not dead because they have been executed. The fight goes on. So, China Nicole, let it be for justice. I want to thank you, each and every one, for locking in and logging on. I do encourage you to catch me on Wednesday. Remember, tomorrow. No live broadcast. We'll be at the Taking Innocence Project movie premiere. 
it's all about human trafficking. Put the power in ourselves, create the franchise. In the news last week, another bomb overseas. I'm so sick of these. Do remember to look out for members of your community. And I want to thank my affiliates before I do that. Let me thank my affiliates once more. One Harmony Radio, Island Worldwide. NIE Radio, the Foundation Radio Network, ClintonLindsay.com, WGLRO, all of Radio Music Media Groups, PEMGTV.com. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Truly appreciate love each and every one of you. Look out for members of your community. Remember, your community is not just the development that you live in, but it spreads far and wide. Whether you walk, ride, drive, take the bus, the bus, the plane, the boat, the train. People you pass along the way, these are members of your community. Do something good for one of them today because you never know who's gonna do something good for you tomorrow. My name is DJ Kevin Stewart, so I like to do it to you, for you, and with you. Until Wednesday, real talk on the night shift. Good morning, good afternoon, good day to you wherever you are in the world. From right here in South Florida, I bid you a good night. Greetings and salutations, one and all. You're invited to tune in to the Night Shift with DJ Kevin Stu. It airs on Mondays with Community and Finance, Tuesdays with Healthy Love, and Wednesdays with Real Talk from 10 p.m. to midnight Eastern Time. Come spend some time interacting in the stew pot where we keep things bubbling and wind down in musical therapy. The Night Shift with DJ Kevin Stu is on kevinstew.com where you're encouraged to have acceptance through enlightenment.